Joining me now from Washington, D.C., senior legal fellow at the Heritage Foundation, Hans von Spakovsky. Hans, demanding documents, uh, issuing subpoenas to the White House, demanding documents, I should clarify, from the White House, issuing subpoenas to White House personnel, and that, of course, includes members of the fourth branch of government in, in the State Department. After all, uh, that falls under the domain of the Article II branch of government. Bottom line is, what the Democrats in Congress are doing here is a setup, right? They're demanding things and documents that in many cases the White House cannot or should not comply with because of this crazy thing that we call the separation of powers. Well, no, you're exactly right. And look, it's a recognized constitutional power of the president to assert executive privilege. And what that means is, is that he can protect the confidentiality of his communications with his top aides, uh, people working for him in the executive branch, particularly diplomats in the State Department, because the Supreme Court has recognized, look, a president can't, will be unable to function if he can't expect confidentiality in his closest advisors and others. And that's what they are trying to subpoena, is all of these documents and uh, communications that are clearly privileged. And, and, Hans, I want to talk about this in a minute. Uh, this is being used, impeachment is being used as a political anvil that's being held over the head of the 45th president of the United States. Framers of the Constitution never intended it for to be weaponized like this. But I want to go to Lee Zeldin, uh, who's on the Intel Committee. He brought up an important point, an important constitutional point, an important congressional precedence point in terms of impeachment. There is plenty of precedence out there. We haven't seen too many cases of attempted impeachments of sitting presidents. We've seen three. Uh, two were successful in the House, and, and one didn't really quite get off the ground because the president happened to resign. But Lee Zeldin, I think, hit the nail on the head when he talked about the precedents, the constitutional precedents, and the congressional precedents. Roll tape. Now, as far as the administration goes, if they don't want to send Ambassador Sondland here because this is a kangaroo court, because there has not been a vote to launch an impeachment inquiry, because minority does not have any rights for subpoenas, because the president doesn't have the right to have counsel present to ask questions, for subpoena power, to present evidence. This entire thing is a political charade, is a clown show. When there is a full vote on whether to proceed or not with impeachment in the House of Representatives, when the entire body is involved, it triggers certain mechanisms, Hans, and this is what he's alluding to. These have been wiped out because there has been no vote. No, that's exactly right. And if you look at the prior precedents on this, when Bill Clinton, uh, uh, when they launched an impeachment investigation, there was a full vote of the House to do that. When they launched an impeachment inquiry against Richard Nixon, there was a full vote. And there's a reason for that. The power to impeach is given to the entire House of Representatives, it's not given to the Speaker of the House. And that's all that's happened here. The Speaker, Nancy Pelosi, is the one that said, we're launching an impeachment inquiry, but she hasn't actually had a vote of the entire House authorizing her to do that. In other words, impeachment is a constitutional process. And I'm going to read, yeah. if you will, Hans, and I'm sure you're okay with this, I'm going to read from this thing we call the United States Constitution. And I, you know, I, I suggest that, that members of the Democrat caucus in the House of Representatives do the same. These are just portions. This is Article 1, Section 2. House of Representatives shall have the sole power of impeachment. Let's move to Article 1, Section 3. The Senate shall have sole power to try all impeachments. When the President of the United States is tried, the Chief Justice shall preside, and no person shall be convicted without the concurrence of two-thirds of the members present. That's in the Senate, of course. Article 2, Section 4. The President, Vice President, and all civil officers of the United States shall be removed from office on impeachment for and convicted of treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors. It's very important what you just said, I think, Hans, when we look at the House of Representatives. I'll look at the Senate in a second here. But the House of Representatives, you pointed out something very important. Uh, it does not say the Speaker of the House shall um, begin the impeachment process. It, it doesn't say Jerry Nadler. It doesn't say Adam Schiff. It, these committees aren't even written into the founding document, are they? No, they're not. And if you look at prior impeachments, uh, it was the House Judiciary Committee that did the investigation. Here, Nancy Pelosi has basically let loose the, in, the entire House on this. And look, 
there's a good reason why you want the vote of the entire House to do this, in addition to the delegation of power. There is nothing more serious than the ho that the House of Representatives can do, other than declaring war, than starting an impeachment. Because what are they doing? They are starting a process to remove a duly elected president and overturn the choice right. of the American electorate. You can't do that, something that serious with such consequences, unless the entire House authorizes you. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One America News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One America News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.